Hello everyone and welcome back to Cops Light. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a broken down overview of Easy Cops. Let's go ahead and begin today's video. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to begin at the cops page and make my way to the task page to end the video. So if you are following along, that's how I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm actually going to cover settings as well. So obviously work from settings all the way to tasks. But before we go ahead and begin today's overview, I want you guys to go ahead and drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new, and if you want to check out the written overview, I'll leave that linked down below. And if you're watching this on the embedded video player within the written overview, hit the YouTube icon to go to our YouTube channel, check out the rest of the content on here. Let's go ahead and begin the written overview. So when you hit the settings button, you're going to see the copped Discord webhook and the declined Discord webhook. This will allow you to separate your checkout logs from the successful ones and the unsuccessful ones and then you can go ahead and enter your cap monster key so if you're sending uh captures to the cap monster api key it will go ahead and solve them for you based on that service you can go ahead and choose your checkout sounds you can play it as well obviously a sound just came up then and you can go ahead and delete that sound as well then it shows your license i'll blur it out for this video and then you can go ahead and deactivate and exit and whilst i'm here i might as well cover this bottom tab down here it shows you the total tasks, the time and date based on your local computer time, the version of the software, as well as the ATC, checkout and decline. Moving over to the cop section, you can see the site, product size, profile, proxies and status. As successful checkouts do happen within the bot, they will appear here under these headers. So you can go ahead and check that out for the proxies tab. This is where you can go ahead and enter proxies that will be used with your tasks. So they will be shown in IP, port, username, password and actions for that proxy. You can go ahead and select a proxy list, but you have no proxy list created at the moment, so you get to go ahead and create one. You can create the list, delete the list, add proxies, and clear proxies. So I'm going to go ahead and create a list. I'm going to call it video test, just like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and actually grab a proxy. Give me one moment. Okay, put that in, hit create. That goes ahead and creates a list, as you guys can see. So if I were to go ahead and create another list, I'll be able to select between the two lists. You can see the IP port, username, password. I'm not entirely sure if this proxy actually works, but it's added in. At this current time, they don't have a test feature for the proxies. You can only enter them, but that's what's going to be used with your tasks. So ensure your proxies work before you enter them. In this current build, you can't test them. So if you want to download like a Fog London proxy tester or any type of proxy tester in general, then make sure to go ahead and do that before you enter them into the bots. Let's move over to profiles. This is where you can go ahead and create profiles, but also import and export them as well. There will be information regarding the profile will appear under these headers, name, emo, shipping name, country, and actions regarding that profile. So let's go ahead and add one here. Let's hit create profile and go through all these fields. So essentially it's pretty simple. Profile name, which is going to help you distinguish your profiles from others. Card number, email, expiry month, phone number, expiry, card CVV, delivery and billing info. If you want to use the same, hit this tick box that will basically duplicate your delivery info to your billing info and then your checkout frequency as well. I'm not gonna go ahead and fill out all this information within the video. I'm just gonna skip to once it's all filled in because it's pretty self-explanatory. So if you wanna follow along, go ahead and fill all this out, then we'll proceed. So I've gone ahead and filled out all this information here. The notable part is obviously the profile name and some of the details will appear under these headers. Let's hit the create button. That goes ahead and creates the profile. As you guys can see, the profile is called video test. The email is there, the shipping name is there, the country is there. You can hit this button to go ahead and edit the profile as you guys can see, and you can hit this button to go ahead and delete the profile. Then when you right click the profile, you can delete it once again. You can also clone it. So I'm gonna demonstrate the delete function here. As you guys can see, it goes ahead and deletes that profile. Let's move over to the task section. Actually, before we do that, I just want to show you guys the clear profiles buttons at the bottom. If you want to clear all your profiles, the import buttons here and the export button is here as well. Finally, we're going to go ahead and conclude the video with the task page. So there is a lot to go ahead and break down here. So I'm going to go ahead and break this down pretty slowly. So essentially, you have the place where all your tasks are going to appear under these headers sites, product, size, profile, proxy, status, and actions. Then you have the create task button, clear task, start all, stop all, import, and export. And just to clear up, the import and export button is referring to importing and exporting all your tasks, same as the start all and stop all button. That is referring to the tasks here as well. You can clear your tasks and you can also create your tasks as well. But let's go ahead and actually create some tasks here. So when you hit this button, essentially this will go ahead and filter through the supported sites. So for example, if I were to go ahead and want to make a East Bay task, I would go ahead and hit 
East Bay and I would go ahead and change it over here. If I were to go to full action, obviously I click this and go over here, then I go ahead and create the task. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna stick to Foot Locker. Let's go ahead and create a task here. So the size on Foot Locker, because we selected that button, we can change it in the task creation process if we wish. We can select the profile, we can enter the SKU. So I'm gonna put in some test-based information just to show you the task creation process for the purpose of this video. Then for size, you can go ahead and select your sizes. Pretty sure if you hit control, you can hit multiple if you wish to do that. And then for the modes, you select the modes, the proxy list, you can do local IP. Then your proxy list will appear here. Given we only made one in this video, video test will appear there. Your task number, you can go ahead and change this if you wish. And you can go ahead and schedule the start and schedule the stop based on your local computer time. I've gone ahead and configured everything I want for this task. I'm gonna hit the create button, and as you guys can see, it goes ahead and creates that task. And a nice thing about Easy Copy is it actually filters the created tasks. So as I showed you guys before, we're on the foot locker section. If I were to go to foot action, as you guys can see, that task is no longer there. So let's say for example, one release happens at 9 a.m. and it's taking place across three supported sides of Easy Cop. You can go ahead and filter through all these tasks here so it's easier to view. And obviously this helps with uh, productivity in terms of seeing what's going on, seeing what's working and what's not. So we have the site, product, sizing, profile, proxies, status, which is idling because the task has yet to do anything. Then the actions is start, the logs, this will change to a pause button so we can pause it when the task is actually live. Then you have the edit button to edit the task and the delete button to go ahead and delete it. You can right click the task to start it, stop it, edit it, clone it and delete it. So let's clone it. That's how the delete button works as well, just to demonstrate that. Let's go ahead and run the task here. You're going to see the status change. As you guys can see, it's going to keep retrying and go through that loop because the information is inaccurate. But that's how the task creation process looks like. So that is going to go ahead and conclude this overview of EasyCop. If you guys want to check out the written overview, I'll leave that link down below. I'm going to catch you guys next time. Peace out.